In this session, we're going to perform basic terrain analysis in GrassGIS. Analyses will include contours, slope, and hill shading for Governor's Island in New York City. For this exercise, we need to download the Governor's Island data set for GrassGIS, and I advise you follow along on my website at baharman.github.io. You can download the data set in the tutorial or on my data page. It will be in a zip archive. You need to extract it. Make sure you don't extract it to itself, to a folder, to a folder um, that it's nested within. Move it to a folder on your computer called Grass Data, which we'll set as our Grass Data directory. You should have a folder that you've extracted called NYSBF for New York State Plain Feet, Governor's Island, and make sure it doesn't contain the NYSBF Governor's Island folder itself, but the permanent map set. Go ahead and start grass. And in the startup menu, you'll set your grass data directory. You can browse and find it. Under grass locations, you'll see the NYSBF Governor's Island maps location. And within that, you should see the permanent map set. You're going to create a new map set called Terrain Analysis. I'm going to make one called Demo. So replicate. Remember your reference data goes in your permanent map set and new data you create goes in your new map set. I have my grass layer manager on the left and my map display on the right. We're going to start by adding a digital elevation model. I'm going to go to add raster data in the top of the layer manager here. The display raster dialog pops up and I'm going to pick from the permanent map set. You can see my current map set demo is empty. I'm going to pick elevation 2017. very first thing you want to do when working with rasters and grass is set your computational region. You can use the command g.region or you can right click on the elevation map here and go set computational region from selected maps. This means that you're going to compute all raster operations within this set region. In this case also at one foot resolution. Let's begin by computing slope. We also want to set a raster mask to the shoreline. So I'm going to go to raster mask, r dot mask, and in the second tab vector, I'll set a vector map to shoreline. This will limit the raster operations to a vector map of the shoreline. Now we'll go to raster, the raster menu in the layer manager, terrain analysis, r.slope.aspect to compute the slope map. Our input elevation map will be elevation 2017. In the second tab, we can set our outputs. From the elevation, we can compute multiple outputs, including slope. I'll fill this in as slope 2017. We could also go ahead and compute an aspect map, profile or tangential curvature, and partial derivatives. For now, let's just compute the slope. We need to check the settings tab, the third tab. The format for the slope can be either set to degrees or as many landscape architects would use, percent slope. I'm going to set degrees, and I'm ready to run this. Here 
here we see a map of the slope. This is a continuous map. If I zoom in here using my magnifying glass with a plus on it, I can see the slope on the landforms. This is continuous data showing the gradient of slope on the landforms. Now, let's add a legend so we can see what these values mean. First of all, if you make sure you have slope selected, you can use a query tool to query values. On the slope here, you can see that it's 38 degrees. On the path below, I can see that it's only a 2 degrees slope, nice and gentle. We can also see this by adding a legend. So under Add Map Elements, I'm going to add a raster legend. I'll add it for slope 2017. For my preference, I'm optionally going to go to the font settings, and I'll set the font. My favorite, Leto. This is an open source font. You'll need to download it or select a different font on your system. So here's our legend. Let me just note, so our values are going from 0 degrees to 81 degrees, almost vertical. If we want it to go all the way vertical, you can double click on the legend. And under subset, you can set the minimum and maximum range from 0, comma, to 90. Apply. And you'll see that our legend now goes all the way to 90. So we can see these pink values, or fuchsia, are somewhere in the 30s. Our green values are uh, beneath 10. And our white to yellow values are very low slopes, around beneath 3. If we want to categorize these slopes, um, we can do that by reclassifying the slope map. We can set, for example, three categories from 0 to 10 as gentle, maybe 10 to 20 as moderate slopes, and 20 to 30 as tw uh, above, above 20 as steep slopes. Before we do that, however, we will need to smooth the elevation of the slope maps because it'll be quite noisy. If we zoom in we can see there's quite a bit of detail here. And this will make the categorized slope map very noisy. So what we will do is we're first of, we'll first smooth the elevation map before computing the slope. I'm going to go to Raster, Neighborhood Analysis, Moving Windows. The command is r.neighbors. The input map is going to be Elevation 2017. The output, I'll name Smooth Elevation 2017. The second tab, Neighborhood, I'm going to set a circular neighborhood to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to use the average size, and I'll, average operation, I'll set this neighborhood to 3. It's going to move a moving window, a circular window, uh, 3 pixels wide, across the map, smoothing it. I'm going to go ahead and set allow overwrite so I can run this multiple times. I've run it once and it's a bit smoother. I can keep on increasing this, for example, and set my neighborhood up to 9. And it'll get smoother. We'll see the results more clearly when we compute the smooth slope. Now, I'm ready to run the slope again. I'm going to go to Raster, Terrain Analysis, r.slope.aspect. My input map this time is going to be Smooth Elevation 2017. My output will be Smooth Slope 2017. And I'll run this in degrees again. Let's zoom in on our landforms and we'll compare the two slope maps. 
So here is the original slope map. You can see it's quite noisy. Here's the smooth slope map. It's much smoother and we'll be able to extract categories from this quite nicely. So our next step is to reclassify this continuous slope map with floating point values from 0 to 90 into a map with simply three classes, one, two, and three. So we're going to go to raster, change category values, and we're going to use r.reclass. Our input map is going to be smooth slope 2017, and our output is going to be called slope classes. 2017. And I'm going to, in the required tab here, I'm going to directly write the rules for converting, for reclassifying this. I'm going to say 0 through values from 0 through 10 degrees will be assigned value of 1. And a new line values from 11 through 20 will be assigned a value of 2, and values from 21 through 90 will be assigned a value of 3, a steep value. So 1 is going to be gentle, 2 moderate, 3 steep. Let's go ahead and run that, and we see our new map. We see just three categories, much simpler, purple, from gentle to yellow to steep. We haven't assigned these labels, gentle, moderate, and steep yet. So let's go ahead and do that with a command r.category. That's under raster. Change category values. r.category. We'll pick the name, we'll pick the map, slope classes 2017. Under optional, we need to set the field separator, and we'll set this to pipe. And in define, I'll enter the values. One, pipe is gentle. New line, two, pipe, moderate. New line, three, pipe, steep. I'll go ahead and run this. Now, we can add a legend. I'm going to go to add map elements, add raster legend, slope classes, optionally set your font. And I'll right click on this legend to resize it. It's not ridiculous. We can see we have gentle, moderate, and steep slopes. These are classified. So we can easily identify that the fort has very steep slopes on its banks, and the landforms have very steep slopes on some of the faces, making a canyon along the path. Next, we'll compute contours. We can, one of the reasons we computed this smooth elevation is our contour map may be very noisy from the LIDAR-based digital elevation model. So contours are supposed to be, even if the ground is noisy, contours are supposed to be a smooth, smooth curves. Um, an abstraction of the terrain to be legible. So we're going to compute the contours on the smoothed elevation. We'll go to raster, terrain analysis, generate contour lines, r.contour. Our input will be smoothed elevation 2017, and our output will be contour say contours 3 feet. 
contour levels on the second tab, I'm going to make the step, the increment, 33 feet. Um, then under the optional tab, let's see, that's fine for now. I'll go ahead and run it. You'll see that there's still a bit of noise. There'll be some small areas of contours, some, some small islands, and we'll be able to remove those. See down here, for example, we've got a, quite a bit of noise, small islands. So to remove those, we'll go to the optional tab, and we'll use this cut parameter, the min minimum number of points for a contour line. So we'll make these contour lines quite a bit bigger, say maybe 100. And we need to check overwrite to run this again. And we'll remove a lot of the shorter, the shorter curves from here, the small islands. And make this a lot cleaner. There we go. That looks a bit neater. I assure you that the landscape architects at field operations drew much neater landforms than this. Now, for the hill shading, next we'll compute hill shading, shaded relief, to make our elevation map really pop. We can, of course, add contours onto our elevation map to start to visualize topography. But a hill shade will really give this a sense of three-dimensionality. So we'll go to Raster, Terrain Analysis, Compute Shaded Relief. The command is r.relief. My input map will be Elevation 2017. My output will be Relief 2017. Second tab is Sun Position. You can change, for example, the azimuth to rotate the sun around the landscape. We'll leave these settings for now. For the optional tab, we'll go ahead and set an elevation unit to survey feet. And go ahead and run this. Can start to see our shaded relief but it looks a little flat right now. We're going to go back to the optional tab and we're going to exaggerate by a factor of three. Make sure you allow overwrite. And run this again. You'll see that our elevation pops out a lot more now. Relief is just a visualization so it's fine to vertically exaggerate this as much as you need. Now how do we overlay the elevation map and the shaded relief map so we can see the elevation colors with the relief beneath it. One way is we can put either one on top of the other in the layer manager here and change its opacity level. So right click, set opacity, and maybe make this have a opacity of 30%. Here we can start to see the relief and the elevation together, but it's faded out. So I'll set the opacity back to 100. And we'll use a different method. We're going to apply, overlay the shading and the relief. Under terrain analysis, there is apply shade to raster, r.shade. Here our shaded relief map will be relief to 2017, and we'll use our Elevation 2017 as the raster to drape over relief. This, the output we'll call Shaded Relief 2017, and let's go ahead and run that. This will be much more vivid, but it, on the first run it's going to look a little dark. So we need to go to the optional tab and set a value. And you can try multiple different values and just run this again and again. I'm going to set this to 30. Make sure I check overwrite and run this. Now I have a nice 
rich relief computer. I'm going to put the contours on top of this and maybe zoom in a little bit. And to finish, we'll add a few cartographic elements and save this map. I can add map elements, including a raster legend. I'll add the legend, not for shaded relief, but for elevation. For font settings, I'll set a font optionally and apply this. As Just as a note, under optional, you can set the placement here, but we'll do it manually. I'm going to resize this by right-clicking on it and drag size I want it to be. That looks about right. Now I'll add, add map elements. I'm going to add a north arrow, then a scale bar. Under the north arrow, I can pick the drop down and pick a compass you like. Optionally, set your text settings. I'll set a font. Font size, that all looks fine. You can arrange these how you like, and I'll add a north arrow um, scale bar. Skit type of scale bar, classic might be nice. You can set the intervals. I'm going to just pick a solid one with no segments. Under the text tab, I'll again set my font. I might choose which side to put the font on. I'll put it on the left in this case. And should be fine. I'll apply. Ah, I need to set the length of this. Under optional, I'm going to set my units to feet, and I'm going to set the length of the bar scale to maybe just 250 feet, a nice short one. And I'll move this down into position. looks okay. When you have the map just as you like it, you can go save display to file right here and export this. Just as one hint, if your shader relief looks a little too strong, one thing you could do is put the elevation map on top of it and change the opacity on the elevation map down to just 10 or 20 percent. That'll brighten it up quite nicely. map elements nicely placed and save display to file to save the map as for example a PNG and if you want to save the layout here where the map elements are which layers are added you can save the workspace so file workspace save as put this in your grass data I'd put it inside of the map set personally And call this, for example, terrain.gwx for uh, gxw for grass workspace and save that. And that concludes this session.